Hey guys, uh, I have already been through my personal um, trading session for uh, what is what is today, June the fifth. But I wanted to go back to the ES and look at our specific times that we're looking for and to see um, whether our specific times gave us any particular setups. So again, the times are going to be Frankfurt open, which is uh, two a.m. East, uh, 2 a.m. New York time, and then London open. News embargo lift at 8.30. Equities open at 9.30. Um, and then I am actually going to ignore um, lunch today. ICT says not to trade lunch. Um, so take that for, for what you will. He says it in episode 5 of the 2022 mentorship. So we're just going to pretend like lunch doesn't exist here. Um, so then we'll go into the PM open. It's going to be at uh, 1.30. See if we had anything going into the PM open. And then uh, market on close, which is going to be 15.15. So I'm going to use a um, five-minute five, five minute chart. And then this video shouldn't take more than a few minutes. Okay, so going into Frankfurt open, we were trading above the 12 a.m. price and really Frankfurt open didn't give us anything so one hour before London open is Frankfurt open and didn't give us really anything to work with um, as you all know I'm a big fan of the optimal trade entry but there are other opportunities out there so we traded slightly into this fair value gap here which was also a um, low high and low so it, uh, this is also the top of an order block and it barely traded down. I don't even think that this really came. So this definitely wasn't an optimal um, optimal trade entry. Uh, we barely came into a discount. Basically, you needed to bottom tick this. Um, but it was there. So we did have a, a buy setup on... Uh, we had a buy setup on London Open that could have yielded up to 8 points. I think what you're better set up for... London would have been on a pending sell is if we take our London low and we had displacement from the London low so London open low and we take um, an important swing like where we had some displacement so from here the previous day it's basically around resettlement so near resettlement high and we take it to our London low and we come very close to an optimal trade entry here so price closes one tick above the optimal trade entry and then it's a very slow grind but um, it does end up going down um, almost five points and yeah so it yields fewer points than the um, than the move up this is true but um, I think I think maybe the the pending short here would have been just a better setup because uh, we never trade into a discount right on the open. But if you would have seen this fair value gap and then it's on this um, on this order block, breaker block, whatever this right here is, just above the New York Midnight Open, it's you could have potentially caught that right on the open. So there were there was a pending buy here on London Open, and then trading into the London session, there was a pending sell. So the buy was max eight points, and the sell was max four and a half. So there was that. Um, and then let's go into 8.30. So I don't think we had any news come out at 8.30. So I wouldn't expect news to uh, give us anything. And, and sure enough, it doesn't. So let's just... Um, Frankfurt Open doesn't give us anything. And then news embargo lifts. So one hour before the market open doesn't give us anything. Now equities open is interesting so equities open um, we see that we come out we take out the buy side and then we come and we take out the sell side were there really any opportunities here on the five minute chart that you could have seen so I don't think so and I think you'd have to scroll like we were reaching up for this one week volume imbalance fill is there anything on the longs? So, 
It'd be it'd be difficult to catch this on the long because you're front running it, so you're not um, you're not waiting for the market to come back and retrace to get in on the long. I think I was I was in on this short today. Um, you had this idea short, which I think I actually took short, but obviously with this very long wick. So equities open was not was a consolidation profile today. They were just purging both sides. I'm trying to think if there's just anything here on the long side. Um, order block mean threshold down here maybe. Just below all these. So, you know, if you were looking at just playing equal lows as we dug down into all these equal lows, I'm, I'm going to say this would have been tough, frankly. So equities open didn't really give it to you either. I mean, I just don't see. I'm not seeing what you would have gotten long off of here. Let me see the 15 minute chart. Because it wouldn't have been an optimal trade entry. I don't think. Well, we broke structure to the upside. Where would we pull it from? say right here to right here yeah, I mean we go way below that that optimal trade entry where's our London low London lows down here okay maybe maybe I'm just gonna say maybe on equities open would have been very tough um, Okay, so we're we're just sitting all throughout lunch. Now, obviously, I didn't sit, but let's pretend like we were sitting. Um, coming into our PM session open on the five minute chart. I mean, you really didn't have very much either, because we just uh, we formed this displacement fair value gap, and then we never even traded one tick into it. So we we ended up pairing the high here. So this wasn't an institutional order flow entry drill. The only thing I'm thinking about on 1330 that you could have been looking for is um, we didn't. It's not an optimal trade entry because it would have it didn't retrace enough. You did have this breaker block idea, so you could have played that on the PM session open. Could have played the breaker block right here. I would have been nervous because I'd figure it would want to come in and and fill some of this. Um, uh, imbalance, but it didn't. And then market on closed macro. I mean, it just comes down, it comes right back up. Five minute chart, it doesn't give you anything. So, you know, <laughs> your your whole range was uh, was at twenty, thirty points. I think if you're just playing this on a five minute time frame uh, without wanting to go lower. This would have been a very tough day because you didn't, you didn't really get any good retracements. Um, maybe you could have played. I don't know what the Nasdaq was doing up here. Maybe there was an SMT. Um, obviously, on the weekly chart, you could have just shorted. Now this would have been on a weekly idea, but if you shorted the weekly volume imbalance fill in the day, I mean, it, it pretty hard rejected that, right? So you would have needed to use more than just your. Um, times on this you would have needed to use more than just the five minute chart like you'd have to be pairing this with uh, a higher time frame idea and it ended up right as we come into the afternoon session so right at one o'clock right as we open in the afternoon session in one o'clock one one oh five one ten before that acceleration macro picks up at, at uh, 130 so we end up if we move this to one o'clock um, right, move this to one o'clock. Why do I say that? Because that would just be the other side. That would just be the other side of New York lunch, right? So just as we come out of lunch, and before the acceleration macro takes us further down in the PM session, if you would have just sold short that weekly volume imbalance fill, and just sold it short right there, that and held it for the remainder of the day, I think that was pretty much your only trade. And it came in right at 1 o'clock, so right in the start of the PM session. And um, I think that's uh, 
yeah, right on the other side of lunch. I'm going to say that the PM session really opens at 1 o'clock. That's after lunch. Now, ICT says in Episode 5 that a macro will start accelerating price at 1.30. But really, the PM session opens at 1 o'clock, the other side of lunch. So lunch is usually some sort of a stop run, some sort of a retracement or a slowdown in price. And then as the PM session picks up, it opens at 1 o'clock, and then the macro turns on at 1.30. And at 1.30, you're going to start to see uh, usually an acceleration in price as we get to our PM objective. So that was basically it. Just trading this on the five-minute, you had a London long, potentially a London short. 8.30 didn't give you anything. Equities open would have been very tough. Um, the You would have needed to have been watching your volume imbalance on the weekly time frame. And then we also ended up forming intraday um, intraday equal highs on right just shy of the volume imbalance fill so you would have had to been patient today if you wanted to play this but that could have yielded you the the bulk of the move from the high to the low of the day that was that was basically it so not a whole lot of five minute ideas in which to enter but you did have your weekly idea that price traded up into and then strongly rejected so that was that was your big idea of the day, and if you, you had it, um, if you were playing that volume imbalance and, and playing it to be re-delivered, not rebalanced, re-delivered, and just put your limit pending short right there, good on you. Um, otherwise, it was a tough day for intraday scalping just on the five-minute time frame. Um, that is it. Bye-bye. Oh, it's just a strong lesson to always be looking at your higher time frames and a multitude of time frames because... Um, you might end up having to trade off of an idea. Even though you're a five-minute intraday trader, you might need to get an idea from the weekly chart. And that, you know, that's just, those are big time frame differences, but it's true. You you might actually not just have to get your bias off the, uh, the weekly, but if we're coming up to a weekly level, you might actually need to base an intraday trade off of it. And that's kind of what you needed to do here. And if you paired it up with it coming right at the end of lunch, that was a good combination. So, okay. Bye-bye.